Namaste and good evening. Uh, I basically would like to consider myself as an apolitical person. But then long ago when I was in college, and I still distinctly remember my political science teacher uh, saying that, you know, if you live in a state, one can be away from politics. Uh, but politics, however, will not remain far away from you. And over the years, you know, my experience have taught me exactly the same. Uh, but uh, the present issue that has engulfed Nepal, I somewhat, somehow say that it is even beyond politics. You know, the border dispute between Nepal and India. On an optimistic note, I would prefer to call it uh, as an, a, a misunderstanding on our neighbor's part, you know, it's not even dispute. Uh, it's beyond politics because it has affected uh, uh, all of us. It has struck the raw emotional chord of every Nepali like myself, you know, irrespective of our backgrounds, of our ethnicity, political affiliation or religious belief for that matter. And um, after this incident, uh, most Nepali feel that their pride has been scarred heavily and the very foundation of being a citizen of, a, of an independent, sovereign nation has been, you know, heavily shaken. And this, of course, as you can see from the development of the current situation, is absolutely unbearable and simply unacceptable. Uh, because, you see, this is a nation shaped by the distinguished gallantry exhibited by our forefathers with the support of Nepali people of all backgrounds, all ethnicity. And, uh, I mean, I do not say that, you know, in, in, uh, in our history and in the past, that we haven't displayed any weaknesses or compromises, but whatever, you know, uh, whatever uh, sacrifices we have made in the past has been for one and only one reason, and that is to preserve and retain our independence and, and sovereignty. Uh, therefore, the present landmass that we call Nepal has not been shaped without paying a price. Uh, therefore, the territory of Nepal is something that the population of this nation, under no circumstances, are willing to compromise. And it's not a big deal, uh, because I'm sure uh, India cannot, not, you know, India not only understands this very clearly, but also highly identifies with this emotion, because India itself has gone uh, through an arduous uh, struggle against the heavy hand in the handedness of its colonial uh, powers. Uh, but, you know, we do not want to dwell on our on unnecessary pregadicio, like we said, you know, we, in the past, in history, we've had our weaknesses, we had, uh, you know, our share of shortcomings. There was a phase of ignorance, there was a phase of, you know, absent of political will amongst the political parties of the day, uh, or the display of apathy by our political leaders of that time for some reasons. And, uh, you know, the more than sporadic uh, political and social turmoil over the years that took place in this nation, uh, of course, has not been of any help. And most, and also not to forget, you know, uh, the friendly cooperation that we have extended to our neighbors, uh, taken undue advantage of. Uh, but then again, you know, uh, now the time has of course evolved, the time has changed, and um, the population of uh, Nepal, especially the youth, is of course not that of 1816 or 1857 or 1923 or for that matter not even 1950 or 1962 uh, you know uh, and um, the way the current scenario that has developed you know clearly establishes that the population 
uh, of this country are not going to accept any form of injustices lying down. Therefore, this time around, it's not even enough to appease the incumbent government alone because this issue has been so passionately embraced uh, also by the people of Nepal that unless they think that they have been dealt justly uh, and fairly, I, you know, sadly and regretfully have this intuition that this bone of contention between the two countries uh, is, is going to persist. And uh, this sort of, uh, you know, uh, uh, a deadlock between uh, two neighboring nations who for such a long time in history have shared common values, common culture, tradition, religious belief to a large extent is uh, uh, going to affect not only the two nation concern, uh, but also going to hamper the progress and uh, rob the much needed peace in this, uh, in this region. Uh, therefore, you know, like uh, in recent news, when I hear that, you know, when India cries wolf vehemently, you know, denouncing China, not showing respect to the sovereignty of India and proclaims how China does not care for India's uh, uh, national or territorial integrity. It just seems like a, a, a case of pot calling uh, the kettle black. And, <laughs> um, and India, you know, for no doubt, India today is uh, being uh, a powerful country, uh, not only of this uh, region, but also a force uh, that is to be recognized and, and respected globally, you know, needs to project or show some kind of magnanimity, uh, befitting uh, the stature of such a nation, especially when it comes to its uh, friendly neighbors. Uh, but, you know, Nepal basically only wants fair deal based on fact and statistics. It is only demanding uh, to have what truly uh, uh, belongs to her, not more, not less. Uh, Nepali people will always want cordial, uh, lasting relations with India. Uh, whenever Indian government had extended some warmth of friendship, Nepali people have always reciprocated with open heart. You know, I recalled uh, the very first visit of uh, right uh, honorable Prime Minister of India, Mr. Modi, to Nepal as, as, as a Prime Minister. And, uh, you know, the warmth and uh, the, the, the fraternal affections and the goodwill was so infectious that Modiji stepped out of his motorcade and went amongst the elated bystanders, uh, you know, uh, to the bewilderment of three or five layers of security that was provided to him. The crowd not only spontaneously cheered and showered him with all kinds of praise, but treated him like a rock star. And to be honest, you know, to be frank, I have yet to see uh, that kind of uh, reception meted out to our own leaders so spontaneously and voluntarily by uh, the crowd of Nepal. Uh, but then again, you know, unfortunately, uh, the exhilaration met with an untimely death when Prime Minister Modi, Modi's government imposed trade blockade during the aftermath of 2000. Uh, 15 devastating earthquake, you know, this has left uh, a deep wound, uh, at least to this generation uh, of Nepali people. Uh, therefore, you know, time and again, this untimely blockades and with the uh, lopsided treaties and agreements and unresolved border disputes 
and not to mention taking advantage of uh, the weakness of our political leaders, uh, you know, has a repercussion of which, you know, uh, befalls this nation and its people. Uh, uh, therefore, the, you know, the current step that India has taken vis-a-vis -vis, uh, Olympia Dura and Lipu Lake uh, has in some way come as the last straw on the camel's back. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, uh, it is not at all in the benefit of uh, not only the two concerned nations, uh, but also uh, for the entire Sark region to say the least. You know, it's definitely not conducive uh, for a nation like India that's uh, marching ahead with global uh, ambition, you know, to have uh, more than a share of uh, neighbors uh, that it has a hostile, uh, you know, relationship with. And the hostility looming in the air uh, need not need to persist because anger and, 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 and malice is going to take us nowhere. The consequence, of course, is going to, uh, going to be far more damaging for both the countries. And at this time of global crisis, you know, in a pandemic like this, where the whole world is suffering, India being a powerful country in the region needs to responds to the need of their less fortunate neighbors and this kind of action will only raise the level of India in the international arena to the next uh, level. And uh, as one Indian politician, a seasoned Indian politician rightly foresees, you know, India as a development power and its rise is being linked uh, to its ability to provide governance solution to the development needs to countries in Asia and Africa. Uh, and uh, also, you know, just recently I uh, was fortunate enough to hear uh, the Prime Minister of India, Mr. Modi's uh, address uh, to his nation. Uh, I think it was on the occasion of Buddha Jayanti and uh, and uh, he uh, said something like, uh, I would like to roughly quote what he said. Uh, he said, uh, we should always work with a sense of service only. When there is compassion, sympathy, then these feelings make us so strong that one can overcome the biggest challenge. So we here in Nepal only wish that Mr. Modi would overcome this challenge, not just with compassion and sympathy, of course we need that, but with all fairness and a good dose of um, empathy. Because we here in Nepal take uh, the border, like I said, misunderstanding on an optimistic note, on the Indian part, with great deal of regret and ask to return what is justly belongs to Nepal, you know, all the historical evidence uh, uh, clearly points out, proves that Limpia Dura and Lipu Lake region is in all fairness part of Nepal. Uh, therefore, you know, as as a country, as a nation, as the people of, of, of this country, uh, we are just humbly requesting our friendly neighbor to look into uh, the facts of the history, and the statistics, and deal this matter with all fairness and justice, uh, amicably, you know, through cordial diplomatic channels, uh, because this kind of antagonistic ant antagonistic uh, uh, atmosphere in this region is not 
you know, not only not good for both the nations concerned, but for this entire region as well. Uh, I am sure, despite a few ups and downs and challenging moments here and there, basically India and Nepal uh, share a relationship that is probably unmatched anywhere else in the world. And this challenge that we are facing at the moment right now, India will deal very fairly and justly and uh, come out with a solution that appeases the Nepali population and makes them feel that they have been dealt justly. Thank you.